Hello, thank you. So, my dad, he's a crazy Greek man. Really, he uh, kind of embodies every stereotype of the fiery, hot-tempered Mediterranean and toxic masculinity and Delco. Like, my dad is so fucking Delco, uh, which is appropriate because he's like a living legend out there. This is a guy who's worked as a mechanic for the township for 45 years fixing cop cars and trash trucks. Everyone knows him. In his youth, he was a popular badass who would street race motorcycles and hot rods. He never left his house without having a giant revolver tucked away somewhere on him. And supposedly, he was one of Upper Darby's biggest weed dealers back in the 70s and 80s. I don't know. He might be more Delco than Greek. Now, when it comes to my childhood memories, all that I remember is him yelling all of the time. <laughs> and drinking all of the time. Like, I was kind of scared and embarrassed of my dad, like whenever he would pick me and my friends up from a movie. He was usually late, usually drunk, and usually said really offensive things. And I learned to stay away from the house on Sunday afternoons because he was at his worst during Eagles games. It's easy for us to forget now that for most of our lives, the only thing that the Eagles were good at was losing. And I remember nights where my mother took me and we had to flee the house in the middle of the night out of fear for our safety. And my mother, she always says now that he wasn't always so crazy. Uh, but she doesn't even know the half of it because he only got worse after their divorce. And it was a really long, drawn out and ugly divorce that took years. It didn't become official until I was a freshman in college. And my dad, he would call me up every night at my dorm and he'd be drunk and totally ruin my high with these violent diatribes, you know, telling me that I was an unwanted accident that drove him to alcoholism. Sometimes he would threaten my life and because he was blackout drunk, he would forget all of it and then like call me the next day trying to make friendly conversation. What can I say? I got a pretty complicated relationship with my dad. I think most people have pretty complicated relationships with their dads. Uh, I've gone long periods of time where I didn't speak to my father. Like during one of those periods, he took his girlfriend to see Finding Nemo, and then he called and left this long, teary-eyed voicemail about how he wanted a better relationship. And initially, I was like, whatever, fuck you, asshole. And then a year later, I saw Finding Nemo, and that goddamn cartoon shook me to my fucking core. And then I called him and left him a long, teary-eyed voicemail. <laughs> my dad, he's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Asshole. Sometimes he's a loving, caring father, but depending on how many drinks he's had, he's a paranoid, malicious, manic-depressive madman out for revenge against the world that he's only imagined has wronged him. And that's why I, I generally limit my visits to see him to like once every four months. It's not always that bad. Sometimes it's pretty nice, but when it's bad, it's real fucking bad. And I need a few drinks to recover. And my mother, whenever I tell her about what he said or what he did, she just always says he wasn't always that crazy. But actually, my father's been doing better. He's been really proud of me uh, now that I'm a city employee just like him. I work for Mural Arts. I build scaffolding for a, a living, so I'm a laborer. And very recently, for the first time in his entire life, in my life, he came into the city to visit me. You have to understand, old white Delco guys, they don't like the city. And he came over my apartment and he even let me cook him dinner, but he got pissed off because it turns out I'm a better cook than he is. Us Greek guys, we're real touchy with that shit. <laughs> and I saw him on my birthday two months ago, and rather than just having the usual Chinese takeout at his house, we went for a road trip to Chad's Ford to go to his favorite hat shop. Every year, every Christmas, Every birthday, he buys me a new fucking hat. I have hundreds of these hats. I never leave my house without a hat. It was a wonderful day, but I was a little worried about all the empty beer cans and empty vodka bottles in the back of the car. Three days later, I received a phone call from the Upper Darby Police Department. They told me that I had to drive over immediately, but they refused to tell me what it was about. When I pulled up to the station and I saw my father's girlfriend outside surrounded by her entire family, I knew without anyone having to tell me anything that my father was dead. The detective confirmed that my father took his own life. He shot himself in the head on the front steps of the house after a standoff with the police. And in a single moment, everything about my life and who I am as a person changed radically and instantly. 
every detail about that night will be forever seared into my memory as well as the next day, which was even worse. A not so fun fact is that the police are not obligated to clean up after suicides. They'll remove the body, but all the bits and pieces that might be scattered all over the front lawn after something like this, that's left for the family to clean up. And even more so, my father had prepared me for this. For years, he explained a convoluted list of things that I would be required to do following the immediate hours after his unexpected death. He even wrote them out for me. We even did dry runs of it repeatedly over the years. There was no will. There were multiple safety deposit boxes at multiple banks, numerous gun lockers and lock boxes hidden all throughout Delco, a crazy Greek paranoid Greek man, even in death. And so I had to go on the world's most fucked up scavenger hunt like the next day, and, or at least I tried. Uh, the moment I came across my first loaded gun, I became too emotional to continue, and I knew that I would just be coming across a whole lot more. So I gave it another go a few days later, going to all the banks, making sure that I emptied out those safety deposit boxes before the banks learned that he died and so they could seize, the, uh, seize those boxes. And I had to clean out the gun lockers before shady family members and friends came looting them and stealing items and emptied out those lock boxes. And there wasn't much difference between any of those lock boxes. They each had an envelope full of cash, some financial documents, a loaded gun, and a stack of pictures. And then I collected my father's ashes and I took the 69th Street L back to Philly. One last train ride with dad, along with a backpack full of cash and a duffel bag full of loaded guns. <laughs> but what struck me most were the photographs they left behind because that's what was most important to him. And all those photographs were of him and me as a child, smiling, having wonderful times together. All of these photographs were memories that I had forgotten, good, and happy memories. And I felt like my father was telling me a story. He was always a big story teller. It, uh, it runs in the family. And what he was telling me was, yeah, I know I fucked you up as a kid. I'm continuing to fuck you up even now. But that doesn't mean I didn't love you. I want you to forget about that duffel bag of guns, and I want you to remember, the, remember these photographs that we did have wonderful times together. And then I remembered what my mother has always said to me. He wasn't always so crazy. And now moving forward, that's what I have to strive to remember more than the rest. And a quick PSA, if you know you suffer from depression and you own firearms, get rid of those fucking guns. Thank you.